Daniel chapter 9. This is going to be part 2, and we might stay here for a while. We might settle here for a while. Might have a part 3, a part 4, a part 5. Well, yeah, hopefully not a part <laughs> 6. We'll see. But we're not in a hurry. Right. Daniel chapter 9 is the center, not only of the book of Daniel, but of the entire Bible. Uh, this is the cornerstone of all prophecy because the focus of Daniel chapter 9 is Christ. And that's what we've been looking at in the whole book. We've, we've seen how this whole book centers around Jesus Christ. And we're going to see that in Daniel 9 now more than ever. It's going to be powerful and beautiful to see Christ in Daniel chapter 9, especially in these prophecies. But before we jump in, Jason, would you have a word of prayer for us? Absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, we just ask for the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct us mm -hmm. into all truth and help us to comprehend what we're, we're looking at yes. um, and be with the viewers as well. Help them to comprehend it too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we left off in Daniel 9 with this attitude that Daniel had uh, of humility. He had a humility of spirit, a humility of action. Um, he had this uh, humility of attitude. He humbled himself. Uh, he prayed. He prayed a corporate prayer, including himself with his whole nation that had apostatized and turned away from God. And in relation to this, he was focusing on God's glory. God, hear our prayer, not for our righteousness' sake, but for your righteousness' sake, for your glory, for your city that's called by your name. Vindicate your character. And this is really informative for us. We're going to look at prophecy right now as we move into the Daniel chapter uh, 9 further, but we don't want to leave out the, the vital part of this message that is practical. Prophecy is very intellectual. You know, we look at dates and days and symbols and we put it all together and we say, whoa, look at that, you know, and our intellectual minds are just expanded and, and we just get all excited. Well, Nebuchadnezzar had that same experience mm. in Daniel chapter 2. And he was blown away, you know, by Daniel the Evangelist and, you know, the first one to attend a Daniel seminar, right? <laughs> and, and there he was taking it all in. But by Daniel chapter 3, he was backsliding out the door. Mm -hmm. He was gone. And Daniel reminds us that relationship with God, connection with God, covenant relationship is vital in connection with Bible prophecy. We don't want to leave out prophecy, but we want to make sure we emphasize that relationship. Mm. And Daniel shows us how that look, what that looks like. He looks like a humble man who's seeking God and including himself with all the other sinners on planet Earth, all, all of his brothers and sisters, and confessing their sins as though he himself were part of that, were guilty of that, and then just asking the Lord for his glory's sake to reveal this truth to him. And what happens next is amazing. Jason, pick up for us, would you, in verses 21 through 23? Okay. Yes, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, reached me about the time of the evening of offering. Um, and he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I have now come forth to give you skill to understand. At the beginning of your supplications, the command went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand the vision. Mm. Mm. There's so much here in these few verses. Yes. That one phrase there, though, greatly beloved, we should mm -hmm. park on that for mm -hmm. just a few seconds. Mm -hmm. You are greatly beloved. Mm -hmm. Jason, you are greatly beloved. <laughs> <laughs> All of us are great beloved. Mm -hmm. We don't need to be great if we're greatly beloved. Yes. And this is the message that God wants to communicate, not just to Daniel, but to all of us. Mm -hmm. yes. Because Daniel is praying in a corporate sense. He's acknowledging we have sinned, we have departed from your commandments, we have not listened to your prophets, we have forsaken your truth, we, and then God says, you are greatly beloved. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, even even at the beginning of the verse where it says, at the beginning of your supplications, mm -hmm. when you first asked mm -hmm. of me. Huh. I mean, that's so amazing to me mm -hmm. because he didn't even, God didn't even have to wait mm -hmm. until he finished. Mm -hmm. While you are yet speaking, yes. mm -hmm. I will answer. So while mm -hmm. he was yet mm -hmm. beginning, God mm -hmm. answered. You know, there's He's, a Bible promise on that. Amen. Yes. It shall come to pass that before they call, yes. I will answer, and while mm -hmm. they are yet speaking, I will hear. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that's, I think, mm -hmm. Isaiah 
So that's pre-Daniel. Yes. And here it is being mm -hmm. fulfilled in Daniel. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Yep. Amen. Beautiful. Yep. And yep. you notice here in these verses, there's two times where God uses a word, uh, or Daniel uses a word, where he says that Gabriel has come to give him skill and understanding. Mm. And that's in verse 22. And then in verse 23, again, therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Mm -hmm. This mm. is vital for us because this connects Daniel chapter nine with Daniel chapter eight. Mm. Daniel right. chapter eight is partly understood by Daniel. I know he gets the goat and the ram because he's told this is, you know, Medo-Persia and Greece. Mm -hmm. But he's not clear on the rest, especially the 2300 day prophecy in relation to the cleansing of the sanctuary. As we talked about earlier, I was saying, you know, that 70 years captivity and now the 70 weeks and the 2200 day prophecy with the cleansing of the sanctuary at the end doesn't, it's confusing to Daniel. And he says that, I didn't understand. I started to look at the, the by the way, Daniel goes back to the Bible. Says, yeah. I went back to Jeremiah and I want to check this out, you know. <laughs> he goes back to the Bible. He didn't say, I went to my local priest or my local pastor. Mm -hmm. I went back to the Bible to see what was going on. Yes. And as he goes to the Bible, he's led to pray. And as he prays and humbles himself, God says, Gabriel, go, mm. yes. go. Yes. I love the way that phrase, I love that phrase in there. I was caused to fly swiftly. Mm. Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? <laughs> yeah. And, he, and he's flying swiftly. And so Daniel is still praying. I don't know how long his prayer is, two minutes, three minutes, five minutes. But by the time he's done praying, Gabriel's there. That's swift. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's for us, that God will s send angels to fly swiftly to our aid yes. when we call out to Him mm -hmm. yes. uh, in humility for help. Yes. Amen. Vital connection here, Ivor. You see it? Yes. Yeah, so just to reiterate that point, if you look in Daniel chapter 9, verse 23, the verse that you guys just read, mm -hmm. I'm going to read it again. It says, At the beginning of thy supplication, the commandment came forth, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. Mm. So here's the thing we need to understand. From verse 1 to verse 22, there is no vision. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Right, so when the angel, yep. when Gabriel says consider the vision, he, he, Daniel has to be thinking only one thing. Yeah. It is a vision from chapter 8 which he did not get a full understanding of. Yep, that's it. Right, and this is how we connect the, the, the time element of Daniel chapter eight with the, with, the, with the beginning of this 70 week prophecy, which gives us a time period, gives yes. us a starting point, Yep. right? So that's the linchpin, if you will, between Daniel eight and Daniel nine. Mm -hmm. There is no vision in Daniel nine, so he must be referring back to Daniel 8, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And in Daniel 9, 24, he begins, the angel begins with these words. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to pause right here for a moment because this sounds like if this is accomplished, it's heaven. Mm. Mm. That's what it sounds like. Reconciliation for iniquity, right. everlasting righteousness. Like, mm -hmm. what? Are you saying in 70 weeks, heaven's going to be set up? Mm. Well, remember in our previous program, that we talked about this idea of the promised land that was supposed to be the center of the glory on earth, right? Mm -hmm. This place that Gentiles were to flow to because of the, the glory of God being revealed there. Mm -hmm. They go into, Bab into Babylonian captivity because they have failed in this. They have rebelled against God and therefore they've not realized the promise. Okay. Daniel is praying and he's saying, look, the curses that were spoken of in the law of Moses have been poured out upon us. And that's why we're here in Babylon. And then the angel comes and it's basically giving this 70 times seven prophecy. Okay. It's a second chance. Mm. Mm. All right, guys, 
Remember the original plan for the promised land? You have 70 weeks. If you obey me, one is coming who is going to be the center of the glory of the promised land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you receive this one, the, 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 the prophecies that, that my prophets have spoken to you, right, will begin to come to fruition. Mm -hmm. I just want you to think for a moment, what happened when Jesus came to his city? Just, just think about that for a moment, right? Mm -hmm. The promises were, I will heal you from diseases. Did Jesus do that? Amen. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He did. Right? Just think about it. they. Jesus was the, the literal fulfillment mm -hmm. of all the blessings. <laughs> Had they received Christ... And, you know, we don't know, okay, what, you know, Christ still would have died, right? He, he, that was prophesied. Mm -hmm. He was to die for the sins of the world. But the result of Jerusalem not rejecting him would have changed the whole history of Israel. Mm -hmm. So nonetheless, this prophecy is given. It's a, it's a which are you going to do? Mm -hmm. Right. Seventy weeks are determined upon you. You have 70 weeks to make your final decision, if you will, as a nation. Right. Daniel 925, it goes on to say, know, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince. And so this is where we get the understanding that this prophecy is ultimately pointing to the coming of the Messiah. Mm hmm. Right. As the fulfillment of the promise. Now, um, this is super important to understand. Um, James, you said that Daniel 9 is the center of the book of Daniel and the center of the whole Bible, really. Yes. You will be amazed to find how many places Daniel 9 is actually spoken about in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Right. So let me just give you a, a quick example. In Ezekiel 37, remember, Ezekiel is a contemporary of Daniel, right? He mm -hmm. is prophesying just before the fall of Babylon. I'm sorry, just before the fall of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And then he is in the captivity period of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. So God is speaking to Ezekiel for the comfort of the people that have been taken captive in Jerusalem. Okay. Ezekiel 37 is a vision of a valley of dry bones. Mm. All right? Remember, God is speaking in parable here to his people. Very dry bones. <laughs> Very dry bones. And if you're familiar with this vision, you know, if it's, uh, God says to Ezekiel, can these bones live? Ezekiel's mm. like, Lord, you know. And he says, prophesy. And then the bones come together and they stand up on their feet, a great army. Mm. Now watch God's explanation of this. Mm. Ezekiel 37, 11 says this. Then he said unto me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Mm. Behold, they say, our bones are dried and our hope is lost. We are cut off for our parts. Why are they saying this? Because they are in captivity. 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 He says, therefore, prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God, behold, O my people, I will open your graves, symbolically speaking about their captivity, and cause you to come up out of the graves and bring you into the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right? This is basically him prophesying that you're going to come back into your land. I'm going to let you out of your, your place of captivity, and I'm going to bring you back into your land. And now notice verse 14. I shall put my spirit in you, and you shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Let me keep reading. Let's go down to verse 21. Say unto the children, or say unto them, thus say the Lord God, behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them in their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel, 
and one king shall be king to them all. Mm. It gets more specific. Verse 24. And David, my servant, shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd. What is Ezekiel doing here? Mm. He is talking about both the restoration of Israel into their own land. And then he's pointing down to a time where the king will come to that land. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what Daniel chapter 9 is talking about. I'm going to restore you to your land. You're going to rebuild your temple in your city. And if you count a certain period of time, the promised king, the promised Messiah will come. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is happening over and over again. The Isaiah, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, you will find places where it seems like they're talking about, you know, Israel. And then all of a sudden they shift to the Messiah. Mm -hmm. The Messiah will come. It's like, why is the Messiah like found right here in the middle of this chapter that is originally talking about Jerusalem or Israel being restored or Jerusalem coming out of captivity? Mm -hmm. The prophecy of Daniel 9 is being expounded upon. Why? Because the coming of Christ is the center of all Israel. It is the it is the central prophecy of the entire Old Testament. Yeah, I think that you've nailed it, Ivor, because when you look at this in Daniel chapter 9 and you compare it with the Old and the New Testament, you see it all centers in Christ. For example, you read the verse in Ezekiel 37. Uh, it says here in verse 12, Therefore prophesy and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O my people, I will open your graves <laughs> and cause you to come out of your graves. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now think about that. Mm -hmm. I will open your graves and cause you to come out of your graves. Mm -hmm. Think about mm -hmm. that in relation to Jesus. Huh. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What happened when Jesus died on the cross? It was yep. a resurrection. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Matthew chapter 27. Mm -hmm. Look at Matthew chapter 27 and read, um, if you would, Jason, would you read verses 50 to 53? Okay, 50 to 53. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth quaked, and the rocks were split, and the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the graves after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Hmm. Whoa, mm -hmm. that's an exact fulfillment and, yeah. of the prophecy in Ezekiel 37. Mm. And, and wait, let, let me add to that verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Mm -hmm. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. When you look at the prophecy of Daniel 9, the 70 weeks, it speaks about this same everlasting covenant that would happen in the midst of a certain week, which again, we, I, we promise we're getting to it. But I, I, I think we're, it, is, it is important for us to establish just how central the prophecy of Daniel 9 was to all the prophets. Mm -hmm. And how it focused on Christ. So going yes. back to Daniel 9, in verse 24, there are seven tasks outlined here. Mm -hmm. Seventy weeks are given to, first of all, finish transgression, mm -hmm. make an end of sins, and reconciliation for iniquity. Does that sound redundant? What is transgression, yeah. sin, uh -huh. and iniquity? And iniquity. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. yeah. In other words, Jesus is going to take care of all of this. Well, I'm, I've jumped ahead of myself there, haven't I, a little bit. But let me just say it this way. We're, we're, we're uh, summarizing every issue in human fallenness, sin, transgression, and iniquity. Yeah. There's nothing in us or of us that we're made out of that, that, we, that doesn't fall into one of those categories. Okay. And if you want to do a really intent, uh, interesting study on this, you could study the difference between sin, transgression, and iniquity. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is going to take care of the whole package. Well, let, me, let me hold up right there. God is, is talking about the whole package there. 
70 weeks are determined for you to finish sin, transgression, iniquity, and then it goes on to bring in, or to make reconciliation, to bring in everlasting righteousness, there's task number four, to seal up the vision, I'm going to say that's five, and the prophecy, I'm going to say that's six, and to anoint the most holy, that's seven, seven tasks. Mm. Okay, now the next sentence, the next verse is key in this prophecy. The very next verse, know therefore and understand. Therefore, in other words, based on what I've just said, that you have 70 weeks to finish sin, transgression, and iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and the prophecy and anoint them. Knowing that, <laughs> knowing that and understanding that, notice this, this is so beautiful. Just check this out. Know therefore and understand that from the time of the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem unto Messiah the Prince hmm. Hmm. shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. You have 70 weeks, so you need to finish all, sin, transgression, and iniquity needs to be finished. Everlasting righteousness needs to be brought in. The prophecy needs to be sealed up. The vision needs to be sealed up. And the, most, the holy place needs to be anointed. You've got 70 weeks to do that. So no one understands, since you've failed year after year, generation after generation, prophecy after prophecy, since you've failed, know therefore and understand that Messiah the Prince is coming. And when is he coming? Hmm. Is he coming in 70 weeks? Seven and sixty-two. How much is that? Sixty-nine. Sixty-nine! Uh -huh. He's coming. That's one week before Seventy. the time is up. Exactly. Wow. Do you see what God is saying here? Do you see the implication? God is saying, you've got 70 weeks. You failed miserably. Messiah is coming in 69. Hmm. You've got 70 weeks, Messiah's coming in 69. You've got 70 weeks, Messiah's coming in 69. <laughs> uh, you've got 70 weeks, but guess what? Messiah is coming in 69 weeks. He's the one that's going to finish transgression. He's the one that's going to make reconciliation for iniquity. He's the one that's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. He's the one that's going to bring an end to sin. He's the one that's going to anoint the most holy. He's the one that's going to fulfill the vision and fulfill the prophecy. Messiah is going to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's, hmm. it's clearly here directing the people to, to Jesus Christ as the one who will fulfill this. It doesn't say you've got 70 weeks, and if you don't make it in 70 weeks, I'll send Messiah in 71 weeks. Right. See, it doesn't say that. You have 70 weeks yeah, to just do it. Period. Period. Get it done. So, <laughs> so the thing you have to get done then, if Messiah is the one that's coming to do this, the mm -hmm. thing you have to get done is you need to accept the Messiah. Mm -hmm. See, he's the one coming to do this. Mm -hmm. So the only responsibility of the Jews under new covenant glasses, when we put on these new covenant glasses, oh, I can see now. Look mm -hmm. at that. It's Messiah. He's the center of this prophecy. If this is all about us, we've got to do all of this stuff, we're going to be weighed down again with guilt, condemnation, mm -hmm. and failure. Mm -hmm. But if God is directing us to a, a, a vision, a, a prophecy that's focusing on Jesus, now we have some hope. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. we can have some confidence. N now we've got a future and an end. Right. Mm -hmm. So he comes in the 69 weeks. Does that mean you have one week basically to get it together? Or you have to, you have, to have it by the... 69th, because that's when he comes. You, you have 70. You have 70 weeks. Right. And I'm just going to, let me reiterate this. You have 70 weeks to fulfill, mm -hmm. to accomplish something that you wouldn't be able to accomplish if you had 170 weeks. You wouldn't be able to accomplish it if you had 270 weeks. You'll never be able to accomplish it. Mm -hmm. So I'm sending Messiah in 69 weeks. I'm going to give you 69 weeks just to remind you how hopeless you are, mm -hmm. how dark Israel was, how dark the Jewish nation was when Jesus came. You know, he came into his own, his own received him not. Mm -hmm. They were completely lost. But the, the whole idea here is to take our focus off this, this, this thought that we're going to, that we need to accomplish something in 69 weeks or even in 70 weeks. I've given you 70 weeks, but Messiah is coming in 69 because Jesus Christ is the only one that can make, finish transgression, make an end of sins, make a reconciliation for iniquity, bring in everlasting righteousness, finish the vision, seal up the prophecy, and anoint the most. He's the only one that can do that. Uh -huh. Does that make and, sense? Yeah. And so um, we, we can say that's this, that in a sense, Israel did accomplish this. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is if you look in... Uh, and the early part of Christ's life when he was a child. Uh, remember that he, 
decree went out to have all the male you know, children killed under two years old. So they go into Egypt. And the Bible says that it might be fulfilled out of Egypt have I called my son. Mm. So the Bible is pointing to Jesus as Israel. And what you'll see is he basically lives the history of Israel. He goes into the wilderness. He crosses the Jordan. For 40 days and 40 just like nights. Israel crossed the Red Sea. He uh. goes into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. He is basically f uh, um, succeeding where Israel failed. He's baptized. So in that 70 week, he's mm. baptized. In that, in that 69th week or that period of 69 weeks, yes. Jesus fulfills what Israel could not. And he says, hey, as yes. Israel, yes. I did it. Now, yes. if wow. any yes. man be in me, yes. Yes. he is yes. in Israel yes. and, has, and has fulfilled this exactly. in me. Exactly. Wow. Wow. exactly. So when Israel Get rejected, it That's it. That's right. good. when Israel rejected Israel, <laughs> because what <laughs> they were no longer when Israel. Israel, rejected right. Israel we have a problem because now you're trusting in the flesh. We have Abraham as our father when Jesus was the promised seed from all the way back in the Garden of Eden. And Abraham testified of me. And if you believe Abraham, Abraham, you believe me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it right there. Mm -hmm. So the point now is we're making a transition. This is a powerful transition. Daniel chapter nine transitions us from us to Jesus, from old covenant to new covenant, mm. from what we are supposed to do in a certain time to what God has promised to do for us in a certain time. Mm. What's our job? What's our responsibility? As many as received him, to mm. them he gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Mm -hmm. you know, he came to his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Jesus has accomplished everything that was stipulated for Israel to accomplish, and he accomplished it as Israel. Mm. He is Israel. Wow. He is the fulfillment of all of the promises. All of the conditions are fulfilled and taken care of in Jesus. Wow. That's the point. That's the message of the gospel. That's the message of the everlasting gospel. And it's right here in Daniel chapter nine. Wow. Mm. Isn't that beautiful? Beautiful. Praise God. Amen. Amen.